Welcome to Red Eyes Radio. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Henrik, and as you know, the website is redeyescreations.com, R-E-D-I-C-E, creations.com. We have news, radio, live programs with video and audio streaming over the web, our member section, of course, with films, video interviews, our entire radio archive, and uh, loads more up there for you. Thanks to everyone who tuned in this uh to our live show this past Saturday, our program with Daniel Tatman. Uh, that's uh, now up in our archive on our website. You'll be able to uh, watch or download that in case you missed it. I also want to give you this kind of heads up here at the beginning that on Saturday the 18th, we're going to have Michael Tessarion with us on the live show. And we're going to talk about the chronology of tyranny. And uh, this is going to be another great live program that you don't want to miss. So tune in on Saturday the 18th at 6 p.m. UTC, that's actually universal time, and uh, we, we're going to go with that for now because all of this daylight savings time uh, garbage, if you will, only occurs in some parts of the world, and that tends to kind of confuse things a bit. But uh, no worries, we're going to have all the links up on the front page shortly with more information available for you. Uh, and turning to more current events, of course, today, right now, we have Paul Levy back with us on the program. We first had Paul with us back in uh, early 2006, talking about his book The Madness of George W. Bush, A Reflection of Our Collective Psychosis. Paul's website, highly recommended, is awakeninthedream.com, where you can find a lot of excellent articles. And uh, we have much to discuss here today, uh, things like synchronicity, healing, and also the uh, shamanic approach. But we're going to begin today, the first segment here, to talk about an article uh, that Paul wrote, uh, wrote called The War on Consciousness and uh, extremely important topics in these times of, um, well, artificial created financial crashes and what have you, and with people acting like the money's running out. And uh, today's money system, of course, is based on nothing but ones and zeros on a computer screen. It's all an illusion fed by our own belief, of course. And, uh, you know, before the money scarcity aspect they were trying to push the energy and oil shortages and even food shortages uh, thing on us and uh, it's an environment of kind of poverty think and, and scarcity save 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 and we'll get more it doesn't quite work does it so it truly kind of is a war on consciousness if you will and uh, we are taken on an emotional roller coaster and uh, maybe after you've kind of thrown up you'll be ready to get off and uh, go out of the amusement park, so to speak, and uh, out of, of out of the so-called reality. Uh, Paul, it's great having you back on the program. Thank you for joining us here today. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you. Uh, you know, the first thing I'd like to do here is to backtrack a little bit and uh, bring up the title of your book again, The Madness of George W. Bush, A Reflection of a Collective Psychosis. There is um, soon a new election in the United States and uh, there's from my perspective at least uh, two more mad people lining up for the job as a new CEO as it were for the for the US and whoever gets it doesn't really matter if, if you'd ask me and, and Paul I mean what do you think of the kind of the current climate since W has the collective psychosis become really really bad or even worse than that yeah, no, I I would say we're we're definitely in the middle of a collective psychosis, and from my point of view too, um, both Obama and and McCain are both controlled by the powers that be, by big business, and um, yeah, you know the one part of me, oh, it, you know, with Obama, he seems like a more intelligent person and better person and all that but it, it might even be worse if he gets elected because so many people would fall asleep thinking that everything's okay now where he's clearly just doing bidding i mean he's been giving signals from day one that he's doing the bidding of his masters of the corporatocracy the you know big business powers that be and yeah so it's important for us to realize that you know we're really in it and they're you know the big the, the biggest danger that our species is facing is is a psychic epidemic is for millions of us to go collectively mad and that's what's happening that's what's been happening for so many years and the part of the pervasiveness of the collective psychosis is that it's not even being talked about yes. because it's it's just become like oh it's so everything appears so normal and our our you know, the whole the whole madness that we're in just seems like a fish in water. We don't even recognize it because it's become normalized. 
Yes, it, you know? it, it has. And, and I mean, from a perspective, from a from a person who, who views the world in that way, like everything is good, right? We're, we're in progress here. We're, we're doing good and, and things are happening and whatnot. What, what would you kind of <laughs> say, I guess, to a person like that to kind of uh, shake them up a little bit to, you know, you, you better start looking at, at, at consciousness here, you know? Yeah, well, the thing is, it's a tricky thing because, you know, if we try to convince somebody that they're, you know, sort of, you know, have fallen on, you know, into the state of madness or in, in sort of they're in denial, in a sense, that's a mad thing to do because what happens, people become very fixated on, you know, in their particular viewpoint. And like, for example, people who've been supporting, you know, for the last number of years with Bush, you know, we've all had experiences, I can easily imagine, of trying to, to, to just, you know, confront them with evidence and with facts, which would snap them out of their, their whole spell. And yet it's like an impenetrable wall yeah. that, that just protects them from any sort of reflection. And that, and of course, they then feed into, to other people who have the same sort of, you know, distorted point of view. And then everybody reinforces that particular, you know, kind of like this mad perspective of what's happening. And, and that's what a collective psychosis is. So it's important for us to have the recognition what we're dealing with that, you know, wow, the actual channel that, that the war is really playing out. Yeah. On one level, there's the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. On, on, on some other level, there's the economic war, which is a major thing that is first now coming to consciousness. And that's been one of the key channels that, that, you know, the powers that be are really kind of, um, you know, kind of in an active way perpetuating war. But even deeper is the war on our consciousness itself. Yes. And, and that's really seen when you, when you just study and contemplate people who, in a way, I mean, when you really contemplate with people who are supporting the current system or, or you know, just um, whether they be supporting Bush or McCain, in a sense, they're ultimately feeding their own genocide. And that's a form of madness. And the way to see that, I mean, yeah, on, on the, you know, on like, one hand, it's actually unfolding in the greater body politic of the world, but it's actually this reflection of something that's happening inside of us, too. Mm -hmm. And that's the way in, because that's where you begin to discover that what's playing out in the, the seemingly outside, you know, the, the world, so to speak, is is actually this deeper, like an archetypal process that's happening in the collective unconscious of our species. And to see that, so to see the darkness, the evil that's playing out, and it's really important, you know, so many people who are like, you know, kind of interested in, in metaphysics or spirituality, they kind of, you know, don't really come to terms with the darkness that's playing out from their yes. point of view. Oh, it's not really real. Everything's God and everything's light. <laughs> and by having that perspective, they're unwittingly being an instrument for the dark. So it's really, really important to come to terms with, in a way, the beast that we're dealing with, that yes. we are having to come to terms with with what's called evil. But the th key thing about that is that the evil that we're seeing out there, it triggers a corresponding kind of, you know, impulse in ourselves. And that's showing us something, that the way to deal with the darkness that, that is unfolding seemingly out there is by actually getting in touch with the darkness in ourselves. And that empowers us as far as how do we deal with what's playing out, with, with that darkness that's playing out on the world stage. So you're saying that we can learn from uh, the bad guys, as it were, right? Oh, totally. You know, um, when you see this, you know, in my work, I'm continually contemplating what's playing out as if it's, it's a mass shared, this dream that we're all dreaming up into materialization together. And, um, you know, when you contemplate what's playing out um, from that point of view, and of course, the language of dreams are symbols. So it's speaking symbolically. Here are these forces that are, you know, just incredibly just get, you know, they're they're manifesting to transgress our boundaries and to insinuate themselves, you know, into our consciousness or, or you know, just take away our freedoms. That itself, from the dreaming point of view, is an expression that we're not in touch with our intrinsic power, you know, mm, right. and the the. the the way to understand that is that if somebody had 
a dream last night, and the dream was exactly what's playing out in the world today. And they came to anybody who who's good with dreams. It's clear. Oh, what is what's playing out in their in their dream? You know, i.e., in in with be the greater body politic, and what's playing out with you know with the Bush administration or with you know whatever. Just how the the whole shadow government um, that's playing out on the planet. That itself is an expression. It's almost like that's forcing us to develop the muscle of our of our true intrinsic. Power yes. to actually to actually say no because you know people who are really involved in whether it be with metaphysics with spirituality they're really into compassion but compassion isn't like a smiley face thing um, where compassion quite often can be fierce you know we need to make a distinction between idiot compassion and you know you know very like true compassion which can say no and which which under you know the appropriate circumstances will say no and set a boundary and that's something that we have to do with what's playing out because time is short i mean there's been a coup there are people you know i'm uh, you know there's been this major coup that's just unfolding more and more and becoming evident yeah. as each day unfolds and you know, we have to really come to terms with that and we just can't continue to be just, oh, let, let, let me just meditate and open my heart and then everything will be okay. Yeah, it's really important to meditate and open your heart and to connect with your compassion, but we're also being being asked to step into the scene and fully participate as, you know, these, these what, what I call um, political activists who have spiritual wisdom. Yes. You know, because to just to just be spiritual practitioners and to not be active in the world or to be just political activists who are just coming from anger, which is actually unwittingly feeding the very anger, you know, feeding the very evil that they're reacting against. Yeah. It's important to to synthesize those two, the spiritual and the political. Oh, yeah. Very, I, I think you hit a key point right there. It's very important because, again, you you say the all these all, all be very well meaning people. As you say, they come with a lot of energy, but on on one level, they're they're still participating in that game, so to speak. They're they're playing on on one or the other side, and and the political game is being played in that way that they need an opponent to to otherwise there is no game. It's like any fo- exactly. football ma- match or what have you, you know. That that is so right on because you know we're in the middle we're you know what's happening is like this 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 mythic process that um it's an archetypal process that exists in the collective unconscious and you know from one point of view it's very clear that we're we're going through what's called the end times in a way the apocalyptic times and the word apocalypse it actually means something hidden is being shown to us and like so there is something so in the pathology of what's playing out in the evil of what's playing out something it's 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 being shown to us and the key thing is is that if enough of us actually you know have the recognition of what is being shown to us that is to wake up that that is to have an expansion of consciousness and what i'm trying what i've been trying to say for you know with my whole work is that as more and more of us connect with that that expanded awareness we're we're able to activate like you know, sort of like, um, you know, this sort of the, a collective, like this, this genius that exists in the field. Because you see, what's playing out, it's a field phenomena. The whole thing with the war on consciousness, it's explicating itself through the field of consciousness, which we all partake in. Yeah. And it's really, it's really important to understand, you know, that particular aspect. So if I can go into that for a moment, I would really, it would be real important to understand because, you see, the thing is when somebody like, Bush or McCain, Obama or whoever, when they're actually taken over in a sense by their unconscious, they be-